Welcome to Haxby Shed and part one of the welding rotator build. It's been quite a project. I've got about two and a half hours of video in the can. Now I'm not going to show you all of that, but it will be six or seven parts. Each part will be about 10 or 15 minutes. So just long enough for a coffee break. Now if you can't wait six or seven weeks to see the result, take a look at this. That's about 2 RPM. So I hope you will watch the rest. I just wanted to show you, you know, it is worth the investment of watching all the parts. I hope you'll think so anyway. Let me just slow it down a bit and speed it up. That's around about 1 RPM. Now that's running at full speed, which at 50 Hertz on the inverter is 18 RPM. I can't really imagine what you would weld at that speed, but it does it. Now it might just look like a chuck stuck on top of a motor. What's the big deal? But actually it's quite a bit more complex than that. I had to create an airtight passageway running through the centre of the chuck for purge gas. I had to make a grounding plate here so that you don't burn the bearings in the gearbox when you're welding. On top of that, the motor gave me a bit of a surprise and I had to sort that out. And actually, even the chuck gave me a surprise, which I'll sort out later by regrinding those jaws. I had a couple of wrong turnings, a few ideas that didn't work out so well and I had to change plans a little bit. So it, it was quite a frustrating journey really. But I think there's going to be something of value in every part. So I hope you enjoy it. I think this video is going to go out on Christmas Eve 2021. So in that spirit, I hope this doesn't look too ridiculous. And while we're talking about Christmas, I got an early present. Big box turned up, addressed to Haxby Shed. What's this? Never ordered it. What are you doing? Anyway, it was a present from this guy, the recreational machinist. And he's given me two workshop magnets, which will come in very handy. So thank you very much for that. I had no clue. They just arrived. Must be Christmas. Anyway, without further ado, Let's get into it. Sometimes we have to weld around a circular profile, a pipe perhaps. And some people are quite happy to do that in their lathe. Slow it right down. But I'm not really keen on doing that. I'd like to have a welding rotator. So you can see parts which might form the basis of a rotator. Starting with this actually, which is a bespoke rotator. Costs about £200 was recently reviewed on Double Boost's channel by John and I think actually it's a perfectly viable rotator. There's a model which looks very similar to this but the difference is this one has got this very large brush here. The other model that I've seen which is about £165 actually um, has got a much smaller brush here and it's only rated at about 80 amps and I was seriously considering buying this. It's got reverse and forward. It's got a foot pedal to start it. John says on his channel that the metal here is about two and a half millimeters thick so it's pretty robust. It's got a 15 watt motor. I was a bit uncertain whether 15 watts would be enough but I've decided it will be. The only thing is the chuck's too small but if you've got another chuck to go on it's fine. I think it's about six inches or 150 mil across here. So you know if you've got just short of £200 to spend. I think this is a very good option. Um, it takes five kilos of weight in one plane and ten in the other. I can't remember which way around it is, whether it's vertical or horizontal. I almost bought that. My finger was on the button and the family were going to club together and pay for it for Christmas for me. They're always struggling to think of what to buy me. And then, as you might have seen in a previous video, I picked up this motor which is um, 
single phase, 15 watts reduction gearbox with a 10 tooth sprocket for a chain of 3 8 pitch. It's got a brake on it, which I probably wouldn't need. So that's about the length I need here. Um, and I also found this three phase motor, 60 watt, with a gearbox, 10 pounds. Well, you know, if I can make something for, I don't know, a lot less than 200 pounds, it's certainly worth considering. And at the moment, that's my plan. I might go back to this idea yet, but I want to see how far we can get with these two. So I'm going to talk about this one first and what a solution involving this motor might look like. I had a go at coming up with a solution based on that 15 watt single phase motor. So here you can see the motor itself. You can see a kind of counter shaft here with the chuck mounted on. A couple of bearings with their own base, maybe a four hole base. Sprockets, chain. I'd need to organise a gas feed. So this is a gas pipe. I'd probably have to drill through this to get the gas out of the chuck there. And then a speed controller. Probably this chain would have to be adjustable, so maybe this motor would have to be able to move this way and this way. Has to be in some kind of box. Now I've seen people make metal boxes for these things. Even if you, um, you've got the metal to do it, you know, because you've got access to scrap or you work in the industry or whatever it is, it still takes a bit of time to make that box. And uh, if you make it out of metal, it's pretty heavy. So I thought about making it out of wood. Now that might seem a bit strange, using wood for welding on a welding uh, rotator. But, you know, you could put a thin skin of metal over the top there. Wood is very strong and uh, very light. It's, it's often greatly underrated. But that's what it might look like. Now, OK, motor was five pounds, but then I've got to buy a sprocket here. 15 tooth sprocket, perhaps, because this is a 30 RPM motor as the spindle comes out of the gearbox. Uh, this would need to rotate about 20 RPM maximum. So a 15 tooth sprocket is going to cost me, I don't know, five pounds perhaps by the time it arrives. Three or four pounds for a chain. These two uh, bearing housings here, eight or nine pounds each. Speed controller, 15. Uh, the wood for nothing, the chuck I've already got, this bit of metal here, the shaft I've already got. But it all starts to mount up. And uh, how do I lay this on its side? Well, I could lay it on its side, obviously. But it's not that easy to do. The chain could have slack in it, which makes a bit of a problem. And I would say, although using this motor is entirely viable, I felt like it probably wasn't the best solution. I don't have the speed controller. I don't know how well I'd be able to control that motor, uh, whether it would be juddery at low speed. There was just a bit too much uncertainty in it for me. So I, did, I haven't gone with this option at the moment. What I'm likely to do though is to try the uh, three-phase gearbox motor. We'll come on to that now. I think this motor is the better option. This sprocket turns naturally at about 18 RPM when this is running at full speed. But with the inverter, I was able to reduce this down to one RPM and it was very smooth indeed. So that would give me the control that I need, one RPM to uh, normal running speed of 18 RPM, which I think is about right. Okay, it's three phase. I have to buy an inverter. But I can get an inverter for this for about £35 now. This comes off and it's an easy fitting for the chuck. I'll take this off and show you. The chuck back plate would go straight on there like that, look. Okay, bit of slack. I need to put in some kind of spacer tube. But otherwise you can see that that's uh, pretty much an easy fit. But I need to think about other things. I need to think about how would I mount this thing. It's quite big and quite heavy. And also I need to get gas through the middle here somehow. And I need to make an earthing connection equivalent to the brush on this one. Um, so I don't burn the bearings in this gearbox. So there's some quite difficult 
technical problems to solve uh, to get this working. I think I could get this in service as a welding rotator for about £70 altogether. I might be able to arrange the gas flow by drilling through the back of this uh, plate here and filling this chamber here with gas, having a hole in this somehow so that the gas is routed through the centre of the chuck. I think that's quite viable with a bit of work. How do I uh, form the earth connection? Well, possibly by putting in some kind of insulated sheet like that and then having a copper plate on the surface of this. I'd have to work out these distances but it could be done with some sort of insulating plate like that and then bringing a cable off from there um, and clamping the earth terminal to it from the welder. Now I'd need to keep some pressure on that copper plate which is there but not clamp it so tight as the chuck couldn't turn or something. So actually this sprocket here has got a clutch mechanism built in. There look, um, is a bevel spring. So with that on there perhaps, some arrangement, I could use this, clamp up the chuck, maybe some kind of driving peg so that uh, the chuck doesn't spin but it just keeps enough pressure on the copper plate uh, to maintain that good earth circuit connection. So the next question is, how do I hold this thing? It's the typical problem that uh, there's a, a connection face here, here, and one underneath, but there's nothing opposite in each case, really. Well, I suppose there's opposites between this flange and, and the screw holes at the back here. Um, but let's try putting it in the vise because I think to begin with I could just use it in the vise. That's how it might sit in the vertical. Pretty neat I think actually. It means I would have to stand up whilst I'm welding. And maybe something like that with a chuck off to the side. Now it's a bit inconvenient having this great big motor sticking up but I think I could work here okay. I'm sure I could come up with a better mounting solution in time but certainly that approach is good enough. Now look here, what do you see? You might see an indoor exercise bicycle stand. What I see is a potential cradle for a welding rotator. I wandered over to the charity shop this morning and this was in for £15. I thought about it for quite a while and I couldn't resist it. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to use it for, but the welding rotator cradle is definitely a possibility. But I definitely will not be using it for an exercise bicycle stand. Let's try it in and see what it might look like. This way. Or this way. And then I wouldn't have that big motor sticking up in the air. We could go to any angle. I don't know, perhaps it's overkill. But it's got potential. It's very, very sturdy. The first thing I'm going to do then is to cut an insulating circle out of this green plastic which will just sit on there and I'm going to use this circle trepanning tool for that. 